Kane in Vermont, beautiful. Though you could say the same about virtually every town in Vermont and the Northeast Kingdom. Canaan is one of the crown jewels. Its isolation and simplicity may be commonplace around Vermont, but there's just something different about Canaan. In most communities, the Connecticut River provides a boundary from our neighbor to the east, New Hampshire. Though once you're in Canaan, you soon realize that the people here do not discriminate and a silly little river isn't enough to segregate this amazing community. Canaan welcomes all with open arms. Whether it's a river or even the border to another country, Canaan is a caring community that puts people first, no matter where you're from. Canaan may be physically small, but its influence reaches across two states and two countries, covering multiple languages and countless generations. Nature Falls and Wallace Pond are a part of the town. This is because Canaan is mysterious and quiet. You can learn so much just by simply meeting its people. It's very fitting that Canaan was given a biblical name back in 1782 because it's a great town filled with even greater people. Canaan is like none other. Welcome to Canaan. Canaan has a lot of history. From the Ethan Allen Furniture Factory to smuggling goods across the border, everyone has a story. If nothing else, Canaan has its characters. Over the years, many different types of goods were transported across the border. One local resident recalls some of the details. <laughs> it was, uh, back then, it, it was cigarettes, big time smuggling cigarettes and some liquor. It was nothing dope at all, period. I didn't know what it was then, and I still don't know what it is now. <laughs> but cigarettes and, and liquor, and surprisingly, uh, the United States, uh, in the States you could get margarine way back then, like in the early 60s or 50s, in the 50s. And Canada didn't have margarine, so you would smuggle margarine. During the French and Indian War, Beef was smuggled across Canaan's border to French soldiers stationed in the U.S. In the early part of the 20th century, during Prohibition, alcohol smuggling became a very profitable business for many of the people in the community. Illegal trading became a way of life for many of the citizens of Canaan. Rumor has it that people were also smuggled to Canada through Canaan. It is said that Canaan Historical Society and library were once the last stop on part of the Underground Railroad. Of course, one of the major things that people ask about when they come to Kane and they have heard about the Alice, Memorial, Alice Ward Memorial Library building because there is this tradition that it was a stop on the Underground Railway, during, railroad, I should say, during the... Uh, before uh, the before, Civil War. Yeah, yeah, before the emancipation of slaves. and. Uh, it's a nice legend to, for a town to have, but we have uh, a study done by Ray Zerbliss and a group of uh, University of Vermont students who searched the archives at the State Library and in the State University Library, visited every location in uh, the state that was purported to have had anything to do with the Underground Railroad. And they could find no shred of ev evidence that this building ever was actually used that way. Uh, I can understand how they might have had the memory uh, of its possibility because the, um, the building was built by in 1846, and uh, there were two slave, uh, slave routes or slave escape routes, one in Vermont, one came up the Champlain Valley and one came up the Connecticut Valley. And it was documented as far as, uh, Lunenburg? I said it earlier today, as far as Lunenburg. Lunenburg. Uh, and of course, where would you go from there if you didn't continue up the Connecticut River? Uh, however, it was never documented any further, and this building, because it became public property in 1930 when the town accepted it for a library, um, 
there wasn't one family who had lived here all the time, so you didn't find any documents here. The attic was empty. There were no materials that proved anything, anything about it. Anything that even suggested that it would have been a... No, and of course it could have been, uh, but also uh, my opinion is that in Vermont, since slavery had been outlawed since 1791, I didn't see any reason why any black person would have to hide. Here, yeah, because the line is, is a mile away. And that's right, yeah. Forestry is a big industry in the town of Canaan, and it has been ever since it was first settled. The area is abundant with large forests stretching far across the Green Mountains. The business became very profitable for the town and its community. Canaan's situation here, uh, close to New Hampshire, um, really complicates things in some ways because uh, when my parents moved to, to Canaan in 19, well my mother came in 1924, uh, she and my father used to refer to over in Vermont as though, <laughs> as though they were no longer in Vermont because it seemed different to them here. And it is different uh, uh, in climate and the kind of trees that grow here. I mean, we're in the land of, in the Great North Woods, which is rather different from the rest of Vermont, which is uh, more agricultural. And this was always woodland. There were a lot, a this lot is the, of farms. We, we had farms here, but mostly, yeah. mm -hmm. even the farms, they turned to the woods in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. I grew up on a farm, we had horses, and in the wintertime, they always went into the woods and worked, worked at the logging. Canaan's location on the Connecticut River made it a perfect place for logging. Logs from both New Hampshire and Vermont found their way hundreds of miles downstream into Massachusetts. A number of logs stayed in Canaan and made their way to the Ethan Allen Furniture Company. In 1932, Nathan S. Ansel and Theodore Bomrit founded the company in Beecher Falls. The Beecher Falls Furniture Factory, a division of Ethan Allen, still employs a number of local residents. Started in 1895, the factory at one time was the largest furniture manufacturer east of Michigan. In recent years, competition from overseas has had an adverse impact on operations and the number of people employed at the factory has decreased. Although many changes face the factory, the state, local communities, and Ethan Allen are working together to ensure it remains open.